Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be with you as I get to teach you and share with you the Word of God. You know, the Bible tells us that man does not live by bread alone, even though we love bread. Can I get an amen? But the Bible says we don't live by bread alone, but by every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And it's wonderful that God has given us His Word, whereby we can know His will, we can know exactly how He thinks, the way He views things, the principles that He's given us in the Word of God. And by that, we begin to grow. We begin to mature. And that's something I want to talk to you about, and that is growing and maturing. You know, every single one of us, As born-again believers, when we're born again, we are called baby Christians. And then at that point, we begin to feed ourselves the Word of God. And as we begin to learn the Word of God, we're taught the Word of God, we begin to grow. Our knowledge begins to grow. You know, the Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, there's plenty of knowledge. It's everywhere. You can get it. The Bible, uh, you can get it on podcasts. You can get it in bookstores. It is just amazing how much knowledge is there for us. But listen, if we become apathetic, if we become comfortable in just being born again and we don't grow, then we're not going to be able to handle the crisis that will come into our life. One of the things that concerns me, and especially over this last decade, is a lot of the teaching that I have heard is not letting born-again believers, and especially new believers, know that when you get born again, you problems are not eliminated. Uh, problems are going to come. You, you still have problems. You still have circumstances. One of the things that I have talked to people about is about it it concerning the problems and circumstances. Why in the world is all this happening to me? I can't understand this. I thought when I got born again that, man, Jesus is going to take care of everything. Well, listen, I don't know who told you that, but it's completely and horribly wrong. It is really bad theology. And today we have people that are are caving in, uh, people giving up people full of fear and anxiety. And we've got to understand that as a Christian, we're going to face issues. It's just like the crisis that we see right now. And when crisis comes and it invades our our space, when crisis just disrupts our normal and we begin to feel insecure and frustrated, scared, confused, anxious, worried, And then at times we even get angry. Sometimes we get angry at God. And we say, why is all this happening to me? And then we have a tendency that when a crisis or circumstance comes that we just don't like. And of course, none of us like those things. But I'm going to show you they are going to come. That's the reason you've got to mature. So a lot of times when they come and after we get angry, then we start whining. We start complaining. We start pointing the finger. We start blaming other people. Why? Because now we are full of fear, anxiety, and worry. And then we begin to feel like Job. You know, when all the things were happening to Job, Job didn't have the revelation that we have today. Revelation that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Job did not know that. We know that, but listen to what Job said, because Job thought that God was doing all of this to him, and we know by reading the book of Job that it was the devil who came to steal, kill, and destroy in his life. But listen what happened to him in Job, the third chapter. Verse 25 and 26, it says this, For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Notice the two words there. He began to fear. He began to fear that he was going to lose everything. He began to fear that that, uh, his family was going to fall apart. He began to fear all of these things, and then dread came in. And then the dreaded day came. He said, and here's what it produced. He said in verse 26, I am not at ease. See, Job was in ease. He was comfortable, just like a lot of us were before this crisis in our nation hit. And then he says, nor am I quiet. What does that mean? Job started complaining. Uh, He began to, to, to look and say, what have I done wrong? You know, how have I brought this on myself? Let me first 
address something. When you get attacked by the kingdom of darkness and crisis hits in our nation that has an effect upon us or in your family or circumstances arise, it's not what you're doing wrong that has attracted the attack. It is what you are doing right. It is because you are a born-again believer. It is because God loves you and the devil hates God and the devil hates you. And so the devil wants to do everything he can to stop you from fulfilling your destiny. He wants to stop you from moving forward in your faith because he knows if you grow and you mature, you're going to have you're going to make a great difference in other people's lives. You're going to have a great effect upon them. You're going to pray for people. You're going to witness to people. You're going to help people. And you're going to give the glory and honor to God. He doesn't want you to do that. So he's going to do everything he can to stop you, to discourage you, to bring you into disappointment. He's going to try to bring you into condemnation and stop you from fulfilling where God wants you to go. And that means to grow and mature in your life. Listen to what he says. He says, I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. In other words, he was saying this. He was saying, with all my circumstances, with everything that has happened to me, I can't even sleep. I have no rest. I'm full of anxiety and worry. But ladies and gentlemen, here's what you need to understand. And and a lot of times, people don't want to hear this type of teaching that I'm getting ready to teach you. But it, it listen, it is important. It is so valuable for you to understand and know that there are things that are going to happen to you in your life. And it's not because God doesn't love you. He does love you. It's not because you're out there goofing up and messing up that that all this stuff is coming. It's because we're in a war. I, I mean, there are entities that are against us, spiritual entities that affect Uh, people in this earth and affect the systems of this earth and the kingdoms of this earth that literally do everything they can to come against the, the, the anointed ones of Jesus Christ. And that is all of us that's in the body of Christ. Listen to this. The Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 19, it says, Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. Did you hear that? Many hardships and perplexing, in other words, what's going on? I don't understand what is happening in this situation. Confront the righteous. Christianity is always, it is a relationship with God and it is confrontational. Why? Not confrontational with God, but the kingdom of darkness is constantly trying to confront us. And confronting us, trying to get us to stop being the men and women of God that he's called us to be. He wants us to fall away. He wants us to give up. He wants us to backslide. He wants us to throw in the towel. He does that all the time. And he, and, and he does that through confrontation. But listen to this. Many, of the hard, many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. So you're going to have difficulties. You're going to have uh, uh, hardships. You're going to have circumstances and situations that happen that you're going throwing up your hands and say, why did this happen to me? But again, I go back because we are in a war. Listen to what he says, though. He doesn't leave us there. We got hardships. We got difficulties. But listen to what he says. But the Lord rescues him from them all. Praise God. Now, that is good news. But now here is something else that we need to see that Most people don't teach. I mean, when we say the Lord rescues us from all of them, man, we jump up, we high five, we amen, preach it, brother, go on. Yes, that's what he does. But it doesn't happen instantly. In other words, when when things come our way and we want deliverance, we're not looking at a microwave God. 
Doesn't mean that God cannot do a miracle. I have experienced miracles, instantaneous miracles in my life. But the majority of my life, I've had to walk through difficulties, hardships. I have had to deal with attacks, uh, tragic situations, it, things that, that people are, are just get so frustrated in and, and get so angry at and, and, and want to give up and say, this is not what I thought Christianity was going to be about. But more Christianity is about fighting the fight of faith. More Christianity is about war. More Christianity is dealing with all of the uh, difficulties and disappointments that come in our life and coming out on the other side with the victory that God gives us. And the Bible is full of that. So, so many people, when we get into problems, we want somebody to pray for us or we want to pray and we want to see an instant, instant, instant miracle. And that can happen. I'm not saying that. But most of the times that does not happen. What we want, we want in one day something to, to, go, to, to go away or a week or a month. Look what he says. He said the Lord rescues him from all of them, but he didn't say he would rescue them instantly. In other words, here's what David said in Psalms 23. Even though I walk through, I walk through the valley. In other words, we could say, God, I don't want to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I just want to skip over it. I want to fly over it. I want to leap over it. I don't want to walk through it. But he said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Listen, there are some things that you're going to walk through. It's not going to disappear instantly. And this is not what's being taught. This is the reason so many Christians do not have substance today. So many Christians give up so easy because we're not taught this. We don't know we're going through this. He, and when he says he delivers them, he did not give a, a, a specific deliverance time. You know, there was a time the Apostle Paul was concerned about one of the churches that he started. And that was, that, that, that was really experiencing some very tough times and some, perse, some persecution. So what did he do? He took Timothy... Uh, which was his son, his spiritual son, and sent Timothy to check and see if they were standing in, uh, standing firm in their faith. And that's where we find in 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter, verse 2 and 5. In, in verse 2 it says, And sent Timothy, Paul speaking, and he said, I sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. The moment that you get into trouble, the moment some difficulty comes, some circumstance shows up, guess what? Man, there are going to be people that God's going to send across your path that are going to encourage you, and then you've got a local church, and that local church should be teaching you how to stand in faith, how to walk in faith, because the Bible says when we've done all to stand, to stand. And that local church should be establishing you so that you'll be steadfast in your faith, not giving up, not quitting, and throwing your faith away. So he said, to establish you and encourage you. Now here's something very important. Concerning your faith, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. No one should be shaken by these afflictions. The Apostle Paul, he really believed that the, the church in Thessalonica had been taught in such a way, understanding and knowing that problems are going to come, that they would stand firm in their face, faith. But evidently, they were beginning to question whether or not God loved them, where did these uh, afflictions come from, where are these troubles originating from? So Paul is giving them this information, and here's what he says. This is amazing. That no one be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know, wow, watch this, that we are appointed to this. That is an amazing statement. What do you mean? You mean to tell me that the Bible tells me that I'm appointed to difficulties? I'm appointed to afflictions. I'm appointed to uh, uh, attacks. This is what the Spirit of God is saying to you. It's that the devil appoints demonic spirits and the devil appoints difficulties and temptations and hardships to come into your life, to come to you again 
to stop you and to get you to quit and throw in the towel. He wants to take things away from you. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. So he'll do everything he can to do that. The Bible says in in Mark the fourth chapter that he comes to steal the word first and foremost. How does he do that? He's got to steal the word by sending difficulties. Listen, the devil can't take anything from you. The only thing he can do is to get you to give up and give in and surrender to him what he really wants. And he wants you to give up and give in. And that's the reason I'm telling you there's nothing wrong with you with all the stuff that you're going through and and the things that you're facing today. These difficulties do come. But God is going to deliver us and he will deliver us out of every single one of them. Now here's what I want you to understand. God is not the one that is bringing the testing. He's not the one that's bringing the affliction. He is not the one that's bringing the trial. I have proof of that in the Word of God. Let me read to you in James, the first chapter, verse 12. It says this. James is talking to the tribes that have been scattered everywhere because of persecution. Now, James had to write them a letter because evidently some of them were saying, is God doing all of this stuff to us? Why is God against us? The Bible tells you in Romans, the 8th chapter, God is not against you. He is for you. So listen to how uh, James, the half-brother of Jesus, answers this question to uh, to, to answer the questions of all those that have been dispersed and and, and are going through hardships and persecution right now. He says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. The word temptation there means testings and trials. He said, Blessed is the man who endures temptations For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one, James is very emphatic with this in the Greek. He says, let no one, don't even say this. Don't let it come out of your mouth. Let no one say when he is tempted, when he is tested, when he's going through hardships and trials and difficulties. He said, let no one... Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tested, tried, I am being tempted by God. I'm being tempted by God. Because the trials and the difficulties and the evil that comes in our life, people sometimes, they look at and say, why would God do this to me? No, it's not God doing that to you. Then you say, well, why would God allow that to be? Because we live in this earth. And we live where there are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And God knows that. That's the reason he gave us his armor. That's the reason he gave us the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's the reason he tells us to pray. That's the reason he tells us to learn the word of God. We, that's the reason we grow and we mature. So we don't fall away. We don't give up. We don't cave in. We keep right on going. And that drives the devil crazy. So he says, don't say... When I am tempted, I am tempted by God. Now listen, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Tries or tests. It's the devil that comes to try and test. Listen, here's our test. Our test as Christians is this. It is standing on the word of God and standing in faith. It is believing what God said and not backing off of it in any way, shape, or form. It is just saying, bless God, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is what my God said. I'm not coming off of this. This is what I'm going to see happen. I believe it. I know it because my God lives in me. He has not left me nor forsaken me in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to get through this. I am an overcomer and I'm going to see this thing through. So, so, he, so he goes on, he goes on to say in 1 Thessalonians, let's go back now to 1 Thessalonians in verse 4 now, chapter 3, verse 4. And Paul enters, he says, we're appointed to have difficulties and things. And then he says, for in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened. And you know. In other words, Paul told them, you're going to suffer tribulation. You're going to go through some testing. You're going to go through some hardships. You're going to go through some tough times. See, that is not taught today. I mean, I know it is in certain places, but in most places, it is not taught. So again, 
when young Christians and, 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 and Christians that, that have been in the faith for quite some time, when hardships and difficulties come, they begin to say, Why, where's this coming from? How did this happen? Why is this happening to me? It's because the Bible tells us, gives us information. You, do you think the military trains people and, let them, and lets them know that they're going to go through some really tough wars and what's going to be in those wars, and they train them so they don't retreat, they don't run away? Absolutely they do. But here, we're not talking about that as much. We're talking about so many other things that are, are and they're good things, and they're the blessings of God, but we also have to understand that we need to know what we're going to go through and what we're going to face, and, and through these things, it's going to toughen us up. And we're not going to be soft, and we're not going to give up, and we're not going to give in. So Paul goes on in verse 5 and says, For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, or tested you, or brought tribulation upon you, and our labor, getting them born again, pouring the Word of God into them, our labor might be in vain." Paul was saying this. He said, man, y'all have been going through some really tough times. You're going through some really hardships. You're going through some mega great difficulties right now. And what I've got to do is I'm so concerned, I want to know that you're still standing in faith. I want to know that I poured the Word of God in you and that you're not running away. You're not giving up. You're not throwing in the towel. You're going to keep moving. You're going to keep going. And you're going to keep standing no matter what comes, no matter what happens, no matter what anybody does, no matter what the devil throws at you. You're going to stand. You're not going to give up. And you're not going to give in. And Paul said, I, I couldn't endure it. I had to send Timothy to find out. And guess what? He, find out, he found out that they were standing by faith. Praise God. That they were still there. They were not giving up. Man, they had been persecuted. Matter of fact, they had lost a lot of things, but they didn't give up their faith. They were still believing God. And man, that's what I'm believing right now. He said, I sent to know your faith. You know, the Bible tells us that we're to examine ourselves to see whether we're in faith or not. You know, during this crisis and the difficulties now that we're facing and things that have come up, you know, people have lost their jobs. Businesses are in trouble. I mean, we've never faced anything like this before in our lives. And my question is, are you still standing in faith? The Bible says, examine yourself and see whether you're in faith or not. Where is your faith? Has your faith just left and gone south somewhere, taking a vacation, or are you exercising your faith? Are you standing in your faith? Are you speaking your faith? Are you still praising? Are you still rejoicing in God? Are you still giving God praise and honor and glory that He's going to bring us through this and we're going to come out on the other side so beautiful, so wonderful? We're going to come out on the other side rejoicing because our God will not leave us. He will not forsake us. He will not let, let us down. You know, when Paul was teaching, Paul not only taught the joy and the peace of the kingdom of God, because Romans the 14th chapter says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So Paul talked those things. He taught about the love of God, the, the, the blessings of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. He, he taught all of those things. But if you teach just the blessings, if you just teach those things and never let anybody know, hey, you're going to be confronted with some difficult times in your life, then that's, that's an injustice to the body of Christ, especially to young, young believers that we're supposed to, to, to uh, uh, you know, to disciple. Paul taught about the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the kingdom of God. And that's in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Praise God. And what do we do? We use that power, the power of God, to walk through these issues, to face these issues. And, and he talked about the authority that causes us believers to be able to triumph over evil. And, and, and that was in 2 Timothy, the, the fourth chapter, verse 18. But he also taught 
that we as kingdom people are going to experience trials and suffering and not always an instant victory at every moment and every time. See, triumph and victory may characterize the attitudes of each and every one of us as the sons and the daughters of the kingdom of God. I know triumph and victory, that characterizes my attitude, even though I have symptoms at sometimes that, that I have to get a hold of and take charge of, that want to put me into depression and want to pull me down. But I just keep focusing on the, what the Word of God says. If I have to get by myself and start speaking the Word of God and, and start rejoicing, and I've had to do that during this time. Even though I've been walking with the Lord 50 years, I'm telling you, I've had to take a hold of my emotions. I have had to get into the Word of God like never before. And I have really had to get in there with the, the knowing that I am secure in God and in Christ Jesus. And He's going to bring us through this. I mean, think about this. When I started thinking, when I got hit with, with all the stuff happened and I got hit about, you know, how, how are you going to uh, pay with the payments and the mortgage and stuff in the church? And, and, and the believers are not going to give. And, and the tithe is not going to come in. The giving is, is going to drop way, way down. And people won't give and you're going to lose everything that God has placed here and, and it's going to be a disgrace and, and it's going to be shameful. I'm telling you, the devil hit me like you cannot even comprehend and believe. But you know what? I said, devil, shut up. You are an absolute liar. And I believe the body of Christ is rising to this occasion. And praise God, we are going to move forward and we're going to do what we've always done. We might not be able to assemble together, but praise God, we are still one. We're still the body of Christ. We are still this local church. Glory to God, along with the other local churches. And we're going to give the devil double black eyes in Jesus' name. So, so triumph and victory is in my DNA because it's in the Word of God. And it should be the attitude of every single one of us. And we have the authority given to us by the Holy Spirit as we apply uh, to these situations. And we're going to see great results. Here's where we start in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter, verse 57. It says, be, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God. That's my starting point. That, that is my starting point in every single situation and, and, and hard place that I face. Every time the enemy comes, I rebuke those thoughts. But then I said, but thanks be to God who always, no, notice this, who gives us, who gives us the victory. He gives us the victory. But I've got to walk that out. I have to fight the fight of faith. And, and it's not going to happen overnight. Who gives us the victory? He didn't say instantly. He didn't say in one day, even though he can do that. Most of the times, I'm having to fight the fight of faith. I'm having to wage a good spiritual warfare. So that's our starting point. My starting point is that God has already given me victory. But then I have to walk it out. See, you've got to understand that anything that comes to you, whatever hardship it is, whatever difficulty... God is in you, it comes to Him also. And so my starting point will determine my outcome. And so I've got to know that my starting point is that God is for me, He's not against me. My starting point is what God's Word says about my situation. Whether it's protection, whether it's uh, finances or provision, whether it's healing or whatever, my starting point has to be the Word of God. What, what is your starting point? Is it negative? Is your starting point negative? Is it that you're looking at these difficulties and, and you're seeing the difficulties bigger than your God? No, no, no. You've got to arrest your emotions, pull them into order, and begin to speak and begin to declare what God has said. Yet, at the same time, God did not promise us that we would have a life without struggle. Uh-uh. Nope. He tells us we're going to have struggles. We're going to have issues. We're going to have difficulties in our life. Matter of fact, in, in Hebrews the 10th chapter, verse 32, listen to this. He says this, But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, that means after you 
received Jesus after you had revelation of the Word of God. And by the way, the more you grow and the more revelation that you walk in and you have, the greater the difficulties that will come. See, David handled the lion and the bear, but then came Goliath. Because the more that you grow in Christ, the more mature you, you come, become, you can count on it that the devil is going to send some bigger demons <laughs> to try to stir stuff up for you. But that's the reason you're growing. That's the reason you're maturing. And you've got to do the same thing David did. You've got to look at that problem. You've got to look at that Goliath and say, Who are you to stand here and come against the anointed of God? Who are you to stand here and say the things that you're saying and come against uh, uh, the the, the power and, and the bigness of my God? That's what you got to look at. Canaan, I mean, uh, 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 in the, in the, the spies, <laughs> Joshua. And, 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 and you look at what, he, what they were saying when they came into the, to the place. And it's Joshua and Caleb. There you go. And so Joshua and Caleb said, basically Caleb started out and he said, Hey, we are well able. Hey, we can do this. We are well able. I don't care if there's giants in the land. and It doesn't matter how big they are and how big the walls are. Our God is well able. You've got to know that God is well able to get you to where he's going to get you when you come through this circumstance and this issue. That's what you've got to do. And you've got to fight the fight of faith. He said, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with faith sufferings. So in other words, he said, once, once the, the revelation came, all of a sudden the issues started popping up, problems started happening. Hey, you remember when David, when uh, Samuel uh, uh, anointed David to be king? What does the Bible tell us? The Bible says that when the Philistines that were David's enemies, Israel's enemies, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed of king, they came up against him. They wanted to stop it. It's the same thing with you. The more revelation that you walk in, the more things that you do for the kingdom of God, the enemy is going to try to stop you. So so when Jesus came, he gave us back our dominion. Adam lost dominion in the earth. Jesus came and gave that dominion back. He recovered that Uh, for us and our dominion being recovered through the presence of Jesus living within us ministered by the Holy Spirit's power through us it is it is never taught by the 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 apostles as preempting trials testings tribulations or sufferings and the Bible continually reminds us that victory only comes through fighting the fight of faith Waging spiritual warfare, testimonies only come after the test, and triumph always or only follows the trial. Only a weak view of the truth of the kingdom of God pretends otherwise. And when I say a weak view, that is a view that denies that we're going to have difficulties or problems or issues or sufferings or hurts or pain that comes from how people treat us, people say things, uh, what we experience. No, those things are going to happen. And what, what do they do? They come to question our identity. That's what the devil does. He brings hardships to say, does God really love you? Does God really care about you? You're trying to, you're, you're trying to uh, navigate through this and the devil's trying to attack you with fear and anxiety and worry. And all of a sudden, all you want to do is retreat. Listen, Christianity is not, it is not a theology of retreat or defeat. The it, Christianity is is it is victory in Christ Jesus. It is the victory through the Word of God. But listen, but you and I have to apply it. You you, you can't you, you you can't just sit there and think something's going to fall on your head. It's not. You even have to do what the Bible says to get saved. 
You, you're not going to walk out of your door and all of a sudden uh, salvation just falls on you. It, it's not going to happen. You have to apply it. You have to apply that principle in your life. Once you apply it, then you see the power of God goes into to, to operation. But there's also what I call another weak view in, in, uh, of the truth, and that is this. It is a theology that today is rampant across America, and it, it is a fatalistic theology, and that is this. Because of the sovereignty of God, whatever will be, will be. You can't change anything. You, you, it, it, you're, it, that's just your lot in life. Uh, this was supposed to happen to you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you're just going to have to sit and take everything that comes. I'm telling you, listen... That is a theology that constantly surrenders to negative circumstances on the proposition that we are predestined to problems all the time and therefore we should just merely tolerate them and it's what I call the whatever will be, will be. Okay? And, and that is a fatalistic theology. Let me give you an example. What if I'm just like sitting here right now but I'm sitting on the side of a mountain and I'm viewing all the hills and the flowers and the trees and the beauty and all the... The, the animals and everything, and all of a sudden I hear something, a rumbling starts, and I turn around and look, and I see this big boulder that's coming down right at me that got loose at the top of the mountain. Well, this type of theology says this. Well, okay, that's the sovereignty of God, and uh, if you're supposed to get killed, you're supposed to get killed. You know, whatever it will be, will be. So you can't change anything. Let me ask you something about total common sense, like we're saying today about washing your hands. Okay? How about getting up and moving out of the way? Duh. Just get up, move out of the way, let the boulder go by. Okay? Or just sit there and die. That's what this type of theology teaches. So you do not need to believe that, okay? If, if whatever gonna, is going to be is going to be, then there's no purpose for us to pray. There's no purpose for us to use the Word of God. See, the Word of God teaches that suffering and trial and all order of human difficulty are unavoidable. It's going to happen. It's going to come. But God's Word also teaches that we, you and I, that we may overcome these things. That's the key. They're going to come, but we can overcome. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. See, even Jesus taught that. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And where does he live? He lives on the inside of us. And what about Romans 8, chapter verse 37? Yet in all of these things, in all the difficulties, all the circumstances, we are more than conquerors through him, and that also means through the word of God, who loved us. So nothing can separate us from the Word of God. And he goes on to talk about uh, principalities and talks about hardships and persecutions and tribulations. Nothing can separate us from the Word of God. See, it's the presence of Jesus on the inside of us and the power of His kingdom in our lives that makes us neither invulnerable or immune to the struggles in this life. But the Word of God... It does bring promise of victory and provision in need and strength for the day and healing and comfort and saving help. So don't give up in this crisis. Don't give up in whatever has happened to you, whatever difficulty that you're facing because of this crisis that has happened. You must stand and believe God and rejoice in the Lord and get into His Word. This is a great time to build your faith up. Don't let, it, don't let your life collapse right now. Don't throw in the towel. Build your faith. Get the Word of God. Start reading the Word of God and say, I, you know what? I know this stuff is going to come. I know stuff is going to happen. And listen, th things are going to happen. We don't even know what's going to happen. The Bible tells us in the last days, it's going to be perilous time, hard to deal with, grievous times. The Bible tells us that. 2 Timothy 3, chapter, verse 1. The Apostle Paul tells us that. In Peter, 1 Peter, it says, My brethren, don't think it strange that you're going through these fiery trials. See, this is all through the Bible. And we 
all of a sudden, it's like nobody tells us that. And then when things happen, we're like, ah, and then we fall away. And the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a great falling away. And you know why I think it's going to be a great falling away? I think it's going to be a great falling away because there's going to be a lack of maturity. There's going to be a lack of knowledge. There's going to be a lack of strength in the Word of God. Listen, my friend, you've got to get yourself in the Word of God. You've got to take this time and read the Word of God. Okay? So listen, don't give up. Don't whine and complain. Be courageous. Pray and continue to declare His Word. Let me end with this. In Hebrews the 10th chapter, verse 35 and 39. This is right after Paul said, uh, had, had the writing of in Hebrews where the writer said, and we just read it a while ago, that you're going to have struggles. You're going to go through issues. But here's what he says. Verse 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. See, that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to cast away your confidence in God. Listen, he can even make things become or, or multiply to be harder, more difficult. You know, it's like the three Hebrew boys when they were getting ready to be thrown in the furnace. The, the, uh, the king said, heat the furnace seven times. I mean, the devil can heat it up seven times. People have gone through things. I'm reminded of my daughter that went through six miscarriages. But you know what? That princess warrior, she would not give up. She would not let go of the promise of God that God promised her children. She kept believing. She kept standing. She and her husband. And they kept believing and standing and, and, and went through one right after another. But she would not uh, leave God. She would not throw in the towel. She just kept believing and standing on the word of God. And today, she's got the most little precious, beautiful little boy, her, her second son, because she wouldn't give up. What if she had given up? What if she said, no, that's it? What if she'd gotten angry with God? And, and I, we all go through those emotions in, in doing that, and we go through why, it, but, we, but we have to stand. We have, we, we have to believe. The, the devil wants you to throw away your confidence. Trust in the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Trust Him. Acknowledge Him right now. God, I have no idea everything that's going on right now, but I choose to acknowledge You. You are my provider. You are my healer. God, You promised in Your Word what You would do. And I just hold this up to You and say, here's Your Word, here's Your promise, and I just choose to praise You in the midst of my fire right now. And I know that I'm not going to get burned. I know that I'm not going to drown in the waters that I'm going through right now. They may be up to my nose, but You are going to deliver me. You're going to see me through this in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has. Now watch this, which has great reward. If you don't give up and you don't give in, you're going to be rewarded for your faith. <laughs> Praise God. Because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him and trust Him. For you have need of endurance. Boy, that's a word we don't want to talk about. Endurance. You're going to have to endure. You've got to be in shape to endure. Spiritual shape. You've got to be strong to endure. So after you have done the will of God, what is doing the will of God? So when I've done all to stand, bless God, I'm going to stand in Jesus' name. I'm not going to give up and give in. After you have done the will of God, I've declared the word. I've thanked God for his word. You may receive the promise. You believe you're going to receive if you don't give up. For yet a little while, it may not happen overnight. For yet a, will, a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. It's going to come. Your promise is going to come. Your dream is going to come. Your prayer is going to come. Don't give up. Don't give in. Fight that fight of faith. Stand strong. He said, now the just, the righteous, that's us. The just shall live by faith. We shall live by faith. We stand by faith. We walk by faith. We run by faith. We're not going to give up and we're not going to give in. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Listen, don't draw back. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. And by the way, if you're looking at me and you already have done that, all you have to do is say, Father, forgive me. I've done that so many times. There's been so many times that I've just said, okay, I, I can't do this any longer. And then I've had to come back and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for my attitude. Forgive me and my emotions. 
forgive me, repent it, and, and then I get right back in the saddle. And I keep right on riding. So he says, he says, for yet a little while, he who's coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not. <laughs> Glory to God. We are not. Can you say that with me? We are not those who draw back to perdition, which that word means to destruction. We are not drawing back. We are not retreating. We are not giving up. We are not laying down, rolling over, and giving in, and surrendering to our hardships and our difficulties and to the kingdom of darkness. We will not in any way, shape, or form. We are not those who draw back to perdition, but we are those who believe to the saving of the soul, the deliverance, the, 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 the healing. We are those who believe. Don't you dare give up, and don't you dare give in. Let me just say this. If you've never received Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, you have nothing to stand on. Nothing whatsoever. You have no hope. But if you receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, God forgives you of all your sins. He brings you into his family and you become a part of the covenant. And then you can call upon the name of the Lord and God will deliver you and set you free. He will come in with a divine intervention of his power to help you, lead you, guide you, and direct you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you get into God's word and start growing in the things, the devil's not going the, the devil's not going to win in your life anymore. You will start winning over everything he brings. But to do that, you've got to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. Some people join churches and think I'm saved. No, you're not. You can grow you're not. Because that's not in the Bible. Some people grow up in a Christian family and think I'm saved. No, you're not. Some people think I do good things, I do good works. That doesn't mean that you get into the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that you go to heaven uh, when you leave this earth. The only way, Jesus said, I am the way. No man comes to the Father except through me. And, and if you've backslid and gotten away from God, it is time. Look, everything around us that is happening, it is in the Bible. It is the last of the last days. You're going to take a chance on your eternal soul. Jesus comes back and you're left here to go through that tribulation. Mm -mm. I want to pray with you right now. If you want to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, pray this with me. Or if you want to repent of your sin and get back into relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He came to this earth. He died on a cross. And you raised him from the dead. And he is alive. I repent of all my sin. And ask your forgiveness in Jesus name. And I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. My friend, if you prayed that with me, I want you to let me know. I want you to let me know right there, right where you are, just right there uh, on, the, on the live streaming, on that tab, whatever it is, you let me know. I just prayed and received Jesus uh, with Pastor Al. Or you just say, hey, I, I repented of my sins and, and I'm back. You know, uh, and, and, and I'm just praising God with you. Now, some of you are going through some difficult situations. Let me just pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are our deliverer. You are our healer. Father, you are our protector. You are our provider in everything. Father, you see every difficulty. You see every situation. You see every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. Father, I'm asking you right now that you would stretch forth your hand and you would heal and make whole. And I just send your word right through uh, the, the lens of this camera. And I say in the name of Jesus, my brother and my sister, I, I, I say be healed and be made whole. Pain Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness, disease, loose them in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, I bind you and command you to loose them right now in Jesus' name. 
Father, I pray right now for a divine intervention of your power in every situation that they're facing right now. Heal that broken heart. Heal the pain, Father God. Heal those that have been hurt, those that are going through persecution, those, Father God, that have problems in their marriages. Bring healing. Bring peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Stand firm in your faith.